In this video, I will be talking generally about racist dog whistles and Nazism. If you have any personal trauma or sensitivity to these topics, I would advise against watching this video. Also, if you haven't yet seen the first season of The Boys and you intend to watch it, I'd recommend doing that before you watch this video. I'm not going to go into detail about things that happened in the first season, but I will be referencing significant aspects of the characters and the show that you wouldn't necessarily know if you haven't seen what's happened up until this point. In anticipation of the second season of Amazon's The Boys, I've been poring over every promo that I can get my eyes on. In one such promo, they introduce us to the character of Stormfront. Hi, I'm Stormfront. Who? I'm the new girl. Wonderful. She arrives on the set of what is obviously a carefully curated Support the Troops promotional shoot, featuring Homelander and Queen Maeve, and promptly tears the illusion of the shoot down for an avid online streaming audience, revealing secrets such as the actual location of filming and the reality of an actor cast in the role of someone who was clearly intended to be seen as an actual member of the US military. She holds up her phone throughout the entire scene, and we're frequently shown glimpses of what her fans have to say rendering those fans as a kind of collective character in the scene, reacting alongside us and by their awareness, constraining the actions of the other characters. Namely, Homelander, who looks like he would enjoy lasering Stormfront in half during more than one moment in the scene. Certainly not helped by the fact that she wastes no time in making passive-aggressive remarks toward him. Hi, my Nan is your biggest fan. As an establishing character moment, it's fairly efficient, laying out an intriguing foundation to who this character is while still leaving several questions unanswered. I think the most significant facets we can extrapolate about this character from this particular scene are that she nurses profound disdain for that which she perceives as the establishment, she fuses an aura of confidence and self-possession with an almost contradictory tendency to speak in subtext, and she's a neo-Nazi. If this seems like an unsubstantiated claim to make about her based on everything I just mentioned, bear with me, I'll explain. In the original comic of The Boys, Stormfront is a man, a misogynist, and a very open white supremacist. Here, however, she's played by a woman, and we can conclude that she's adapted a cryptic and internet-savvy approach to her ideology. As with her comic book counterpart, her costume colors are still red and black, the colors of Nazi officer uniforms. However, here, instead of a massive swastika patterned directly onto her cape, she opts for subtler imagery. She wears metal armbands, and while they depict the US flag, instead of stars, these feature tiny studs, which evoke geometric crisscrossing patterns, which I think manage to be reminiscent of Norse artistry, something that neo-Nazis are unfortunately too often obsessed with, as well as swastikas. Her earrings are thunderbolts designed in the style of the SS symbol. Her belt showcases a depiction of an iron eagle. And even these straps just under her belt are strikingly similar to accents featured on many Nazi uniforms. For anyone who isn't familiar, dog whistling is the use of coded political messaging designed to appeal to people who are friendly toward a particular political sentiment, while generally avoiding negative reactions to that message from people who oppose it. In practice, this means that people who use dog whistles often need to be ready to adopt and then abandon particular symbols that they use to maintain deniability and to create confusion among their detractors. The last comment that shows on Stormfront's live feed in the promo is a fan saying that they love her earrings which I think captures the uncertainty and the disorientation that can be brought about by the use of dog whistles, particularly in cases related to neo-Nazism. The best case scenario for neo-Nazis who partake in this strategy involves managing to preserve enough mystery that when people who recognize the coded messaging attempt to expose it, those people can be labeled as deluded and paranoid, and thus written off by people who might otherwise be sympathetic to their concerns. We can't know for certain whether the person admiring Stormfront's earrings realizes the underlying message those earrings are intended to convey. We can't know whether they're an impressionable 14-year-old who likes the earrings for their aesthetic association with Stormfront, or a jaded 40-year-old who is perfectly aware of the hatred that Stormfront is advertising. 
None of which is to say that 14-year-olds can't also be in the know in these matters. And this uncertainty can have the additional consequence of making even those who are willing to confront the use of these symbols doubt their own accurate perceptions. Because where that jaded 40-year-old may not be able to lie well enough to obfuscate their own agenda when challenged, the misdirected but genuine incredulity with which that guileless 14-year-old would answer the same accusations might be more convincing, even to the people who know better. When we recognize all of these subtextual messages in Stormfront's uniform and attitude, it can make her appear rather eerie. The character makes a production of mentioning how blue Homelander's eyes are, something that's not necessarily a cause for alarm on its own, but in conjunction with all these other factors and the look she gives him here. I know I mentioned Homelander's expression earlier, and truly, I didn't before think anything in the show could scare me as much as Homelander. I had bad dreams about him while watching the first season. Homelander is very literally the stuff of my nightmares, but this look that she gives him here terrifies me. She looks at him like he's a butterfly that she wants to pin under glass. My biggest concern for characters like Stormfront is the potential for real-life neo-Nazis to like the portrayal and want to claim that character as a mascot. It happened with American History X, and it happened with Hans Landa from Inglorious Bastards. If Nazis in the audience can perceive a coolness factor in Nazi-coded characters, they are often very likely to enjoy, embrace, and claim that representation. And it's a particular danger when the Nazi in question is an actual superhero. In this case, one of the most powerful in the setting. Now, don't be a pussy, laser my fucking tits. One, two, three. But on that front, I'm fairly reassured. There's a convergence in this character that suggests to me that the showrunners are very aware of this danger and that they're taking some pains to avoid it. Between her hair, which manages to evoke a style reminiscent of the Hitler Youth, while being non-traditional for a woman in a way that many reactionaries disdain, and her status as an internet influencer, something that reactionaries often equally despise, if only because they resent not being the ones doing the influencing. And finally, because the actor herself is Jewish, and casting a Jewish actor as a Nazi is a potentially fantastic, if small way, to snub real-life Nazis. Taika Waititi did it to fabulous effect in Jojo Rabbit, by accurately showing the spirit of fascist indoctrination as something that's built on feelings of fear and insecurity, as well as clearly demonstrating, in ways that media like Hogan's Heroes largely fail, that Nazis can be both absurd and sinister. If anyone watching this has ever written off the applicability of a fascist label based on an appearance of buffoonishness, I urge you to reconsider that assumption. The Nazi party was notoriously bumbling and notoriously dangerous. Foolishness and hatefulness are a combination that we underestimate at our own peril. Please? Fuck off, Hitler! <laughs> <laughs> This brings me to my next concern, the idea of horseshoe theory. This is a potential that a lot of the fans have noticed around the video, because Stormfront is very pointedly characterized as being from Portland. <laughs> Portland, actually. Oregon? Yeah. Dream of the night is alive, Portland. And Portland is overwhelmingly perceived as a place dominated by liberal sentiment. Viewers perceive a Nazi from Portland to be ironic, and thus some of them reason that in this case, the show writers might be appealing to the concept of horseshoe theory. Horseshoe theory asserts that political positions, namely left and right-wing ideas, are not oppositional to one another, but analogous that the further that they stretch away from each other on a political continuum, the more they begin to resemble one another. This theory is interlinked with the concept of the golden mean, Aristotle's idea that virtues like courage require a balance between ferocious recklessness and sniveling timidity. This is actually a fairly understandable position when it comes to very general rules of behavior. It seems intuitive, and thus it's fairly popular in the mainstream of American political discourse. 
heavily contested though it may be. In its best possible iteration, this theory can perhaps illustrate how, when people are fiercely anti-establishment enough, they can sometimes be more ready to align with other people who are adverse to their positions in every way, except for the anti-establishment sentiment, than they would be to align with someone who is closer to their social perspective in every other way, but who is seen as corrupted by the establishment. Or at least, that's what I think many people are driving at when they cite this idea. But while I understand that argument, I don't think it holds water. And I don't think it's a natural progression from either far-left or far-right perspectives. I think it's merely an example of anti-establishmentarianism superseding all other priorities. Horseshoe theory in its worst and most prevalent possible iteration can reinforce the assumption among centrists or apolitical people that they are necessarily less susceptible to neo-Nazi or fascist ideology than people who are actively opposed to it. In some cases, it can even assert that logic and science are fundamentally politically centrist, which is not how science works. In fact, it is centrists and the apolitical whom neo-Nazis strive the hardest to market their ideas toward. And as I mentioned before, it's all the better for the neo-Nazis if apolitical people pick up the use of those Nazi dog whistles without fully comprehending the intent behind them. On the other hand, if the show does clearly characterize Stormfront as being far right, even if only through steadily making her true positions explicit over time, this could potentially be a wonderfully fresh way to go about that. Because while media focus often tends to depict places like Oregon and California as overwhelmingly progressive, these states are very large and outside of the cities often very conservative. It would be amazing if Stormfront actually ends up representing that right-wing extremism can and does still exist in these environments. Just once I'd love to see the average Clovis or Manteca or Bend resident portrayed on the media, instead of casting the character of Berkeley in Zombieland 2 and having him be the predictable California hippie guy. They could have had a quintessential Central Valley cowboy, or a quintessential Bay Area right-wing libertarian economics teacher. I don't actually know if the last one is really a type, I'm just curious if I'll get a hundred comments of people who have noticed it too. I think it'd be a better story if he turned out to be surprisingly heroic, but it didn't seem like... That's where they were going. It's unlikely that I'll get to see everything that I hope to see from this character. Ambiguity is clearly a feature. And I have to acknowledge that they don't seem to be exploring the female misogynist angle the way that I hoped. Look, I am with you, sister, but first we have to go get the terrorist, okay? At least not on the surface. And even if all of my hopes and concerns are addressed and dealt with in the best possible way that I could imagine, chances are there will still be people who will become admirers of the character without fully understanding what she represents. I mean, there are already figurines of her available online. And while that's not necessarily a problem, in the cases where it is, the best tool we have is awareness. Well, I think this is going great. I sure hope so. But my idea of this going great entails her either being thrown directly into the sun or experiencing a series of humiliations comparable to what is now the Deep's torturous existence.
Ashley being back after she was fired is kind of huge, and the abject terror and distress on her face when she tells Homelander and Maeve that she didn't know anything about Stormfront makes me wonder if she knows about Homelander's penchant for lasering people's eyes. It would be amazing if we get to watch her suffer more in trying to deal with Stormfront. That could go either way. I could just enjoy watching Ashley scramble to deal with the confusing media nightmare. Or maybe they might flip the dynamic and make me actually begin to feel bad for her. When they try to get her to toe the line, Stormfront could say, I could stand in the middle of Times Square and lightning bolt someone and my fan base would still love me. <laughs> you are fun. <laughs> Portland, actually. The dream of the night is alive. 